Hi, welcome to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel. We're here at Metro East Community Media in Gresham, Oregon. Tonight we're going to be talking with a, an organization that is uh, doing really important things in the community and with me to represent that organization is the founder and executive director and somebody I dearly love to interview, oh. Giovanni Blair McKenzie. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Monica. It's a pleasure. It's my second time here I know, I at know. Metro East, and I love you guys, and I love this beautiful studio, so thanks for having you me there. Yeah, I had a ball when you were here last time. You were here with Smirk, right? Yeah. I was here yeah. with Smirk. And that was fun. Yeah. It was exciting, like so exciting, and I'm, I'm again, happy to be back. you kind of grown up a little bit since then. <laughs> I have. You know, it's been a couple years, and it's interesting to, like, see how, you know, I've developed as yeah. a person. I have found my voice, and... I've started a nonprofit of my own, and and that's what we're going to talk about yeah. tonight. And so, which I haven't mentioned yet, I mean, just Queer Intersections Portland. Yeah. yeah. So Queer Intersections Portland is one of two organizations in the entire country, and the only one on the West Coast that is specifically working with LGBTQ youth of color. Ah. So yeah. that's that's a niche market there, isn't it? I mean, it's, it it's a, an area um, that just hasn't gotten the support they need. No, and you know, right now when we're listening and we're seeing in the media of how many young black men are being killed mm -hmm. each day in their mm -hmm. own communities, right. and many by you know the police. Police officers. Yeah. And we see you know the number of um, transgender women of color that's being killed in their own communities. We realize that you know this has made so many youth, LGBT youth of color, feel unsafe in the places that they come. Understandably, yeah. You know, uh, it's a terrifying thing to think. You know, I am going. I could be attacked for something that is me, and I, you have no. You know, it's not something you you went out and chose. That I want to be black, and I want to be <laughs> exactly you know, gay or whatever it is. You know, exactly. It's, it's you, and, exactly. and everybody should be proud of who they are. And it did bother me, you know, I think it was last year uh, when we saw, um, you know, members of the Portland police had graphics on their Facebook pages saying, I am Darren Wilson. And I was very bothered by that because, you know, Darren Wilson killed a young black man, and right now he's a millionaire. You know, the money that was raised for him by, you know, Americans across the country, mm -hmm. the payments he got for, you know, speaking engagements, you know. <laughs> Doesn't Dar seem right, does it? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Darren Wilson isn't a millionaire that killed a young black mm -hmm. youth and got away with it. Right. So and, and getting away with it seems to happen a lot. Exactly. So how can we ensure that, you know, the youth who are living on, you know, the intersections mm -hmm. and yeah, the I, margins. I, I like that, the intersections. That's a great um, way of describing it. Yeah. The intersections of color and uh, sexuality and whatever else. Poverty, yeah. you know, immigration status, you name it. Many mm -hmm. of these youth, they wanna be successful. They wanna give back to the community. Um, you know, many of you that we work with are going into careers that they're literally giving back. Yeah. You know, so why so is let it? them. <laughs> exactly, yeah. like let why is it know. that they cannot feel safe right. and empowered right. and as though they have a voice as everyone else? So how do you do that? How do we do that? You know, so we you have, have, have programs. Yeah. yeah. So for the last three, for the last two years, our work has been very, you know, dedicated on visibility. Mm -hmm. And this year we're doing that more than ever. We have an exciting initiative that we're unleashing in a couple months, but we're kind of like, you know, not so given too much information about it because we want to okay. excite people. Okay, just tease you know. a little bit here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but you know, it's, I can't say that. It's really focused on an intersectional approach. So when you uh, you say it's an initiative, this isn't a political thing. No, it's, okay. like no, I, no, no. I, so it's checking. an initiative yeah. for us because it's long term. Yeah. You yeah. know, how can we get not just, you know, everyday individuals, but also government agencies and organizations that are dedicated to serving these youth, mm -hmm. whether they be youth of color, whether they be youth in poverty, whether they be LGBTQ youth. You know, we find that um, 30 to about 40% of all homeless youth are LGBT. Mm. And what's crazy about that is, you know, more than three fourths of those are youth of color. Yeah. So how do you handle that when, when you've got that intersection there? Because there are groups that, that support, you know, LGBT. There's groups that support people of color. There's groups that support homeless. Yeah. But if you're all of that and maybe more, 
where do you go? Where do you go for help? And I think, you know, that's like the big question. That's one of the big questions that we find ourselves like asking. Mm -hmm. And it's a question that they've been asking themselves. Right. You know, if we are serving, say, homeless youth, how do we make sure that we are serving the youth of color mm -hmm. that come to our spaces who are, you know, living life from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Than, say, had different experiences. Exactly. Different, yeah. mm -hmm. You know, they know that they're being treated differently. They know that they are, you know, being watched by mm -hmm. the police differently. And they do understand that in many cases, these youth go to these, you know, say shelters mm -hmm. and are treated differently by staff. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons why you see most of them on the streets. Yeah. They, they don't know where to go to be safe. They don't know where to be go they don't know where to go to be safe. So again, it's like how do we provide an intersectional approach to all of our advocacies mm -hmm. and how do we bring everyone together to ensure that we're looking at people as whole individuals. Right. Right. And right. not just as there's more there's more exactly. to you than just the color of your skin or your you know, sexual who you identity love. or yeah, yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. that has been like such a big priority for us this year. It's, there's a lot of work to be done, isn't there? I mean, education of just people in general, and you know, when you talk about visibility, I mean, that's part of it, you know? Yeah. It, it, making people understand that this person here is a person. I yeah. am a person, and yeah. you know, we have different privileges. You know, I... Explain what you mean by that. So I have the privilege of being a male passing individual. So I can go in to a job mm -hmm. and be treated as a male would. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, on the other hand, I am, you know, black passing. So when I go to a store, I find myself being followed. Mm, right. You right. know, and that's What's privilege. What's take? Mm, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah, privilege. Yeah. You know, I go into a workplace and I also find myself having to prove that I belong there. Yeah. You know, prove yeah. that I was the right hire. Right. And yes, I've experienced that a lot of times. And everybody should have to prove they're the right hire, but... but for their work. Yeah, but yeah. not having to no. feel like you have to work, say, three times harder. Right, right. Because right. you're a woman. Right, right. And five times harder because you're a person of color. And so that's what I mean when I talk privilege. Because we do realize that, you know, when you are talking about, say, a young kid that is going missing. Mm -hmm. And if this person is, say, white, mm -hmm. let's be honest. A lot of attention. A lot of attention. Yeah. yeah you know, that, yeah. when this person is wealthy, let's again be honest, that's a privilege. Right. More right. attention. Mm -hmm. So let's understand how privilege does have, you know, does become a factor right. Right. in a lot of these conversations and how we get to live our daily lives. Yeah. So that's definitely like such a big part of that conversation. Wow. You know, you um, we have some pictures and yeah. I want to show some of those. And, and it's, it's mostly kids and people just kind of doing what you do at, 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 um, at your organization, at Queer Intersection. So tell me, like, for example, this. This looks like they're tabling <laughs> at a fair or something. So what yeah, so this is, this is um, Gay Fair on the Square. That was um, I think what was like, that again? so gay fair on the square, <laughs> and I can say it is as gay as it sounds. <laughs> Literally, the gayest event that I have ever seen in Pioneer Square. It was exciting, you know, getting people to know more about the work that we do. Mm -hmm. And was it you just know. your organization that did this, so or was it? Several? It was a group of organizations. Um, it was organized by you know the Portland Gay Men's Chorus and Q yeah. Center okay, here yeah, in Portland, yeah. Oregon. So there were a number of organizations that you know work with LGBT mm -hmm. groups and companies that do have you know a very big focus on better serving their LGBT clients. Well, so you have partners in the community, which yeah. is a huge thing for most you know nonprofit organizations to get done what you need to do. It is, and you know we one thing that we rec we've recognized from an early time was that. We can't do everything on our own. Right, right. And it's important that, you know, we partner with other organizations that are doing, you know, the critical work that, mm -hmm. you know, we can't do ourselves. You do what you do best, they can do what they do. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. we partner with each yeah. other. And that's a great thing. I, I fully believe in that. Exactly. Tell me what we're looking at here. So we are looking at um, what we had, what was called um, Ferguson Friday. Um, and it was a part of our Portland Tea Series where we bring together members of the community to have, you know, thought-provoking conversations that are, you know, going to really impact some social change. Mm -hmm. And this was right when we were seeing an increase 
in um, protest because mm -hmm. of what was happening in Ferguson, mm -hmm. Missouri. And for me, this was also the largest um, gathering of, of LGBTQ youth of color. And on this day, we had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation on how you know the killing of Mike Brown mm -hmm. had impacted LGBTQ youth of color here in the city. Because let's mm -hmm. face it, you know, being an LGBT person is hard. Yeah, let's let's be yeah, honest. I'm sure it is. You know, and I have being, no doubt. And being a young person, you're looking at a time where you're trying to figure yourself out and you're going through life. And being a so, young person is hard enough just being a young person. Exactly. And look at a point in time where you see another person of color being killed. Mm -hmm. And the person, the killer got away with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a community's hurt. And young people of color do not feel safe in their own communities. Mm -hmm. How does it feel then as a person? You can't just pretend, okay, my LGBTQ self. Yeah. I'm gonna put this aside today. Yeah, you know, it's, you, it's always gonna be there. It's always there. Yeah. So how do you take care of yourself and ensure that you are visible right. and ensure that you know you're keeping your community equitable right. Right. for your safety? Yeah. That's important. So that was the conversation. Now, this is part of how you first became uh, uh, <laughs> visible. <laughs> that, that was you and me, and um, I can't remember the girl's name from Smirk, but she was. She I was know. Um, so that's Asher from yeah, Smirk. Yes, Asher, yeah. And we were here in I this am, beautiful yeah. place. And I'm so excited yeah. to be back here. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. yeah. That's fun. Oh, and now you, you do a lot of speaking now, don't I you? I do yeah. do a lot of speaking. So look how, that, look how dapper you look there. Oh, thank you, thank you. And as you can, as you should know, I am growing my hair out again. I saw, I keep seeing that picture, and I'm like, you know what, Giovanni? I like that look. Let's go back to that look, because it's really, you know, like you just say, so dapper and yeah. so chic. Yes, yes. Okay, and, the, and this is a group of... So this was a very important day for us, because um, we had Jace Marcus. And Jace Marcus is a young black trans male student at George Fox oh. that gained headlines from you know I, the yeah. New York Times and many other major um, news outlets I knew that name. Yeah, for that. you know making sure that his university treated him as the gender he is, which is male. Mm -hmm. And it was such a moving evening that even you know I'm, it's hard for me to show you know, my feelings. Yeah. And the entire time I was like, Giovanni, if you dare cry, because <laughs> his story was so compelling, you know, talking about what it's like to be a young black male mm -hmm. in the year 2014, and being a transgender male on top of that. Yeah. In the state pile of it on, huh? Oregon, and yeah. going to, you know, a Christian religious university. Oh, I can't even imagine, yeah. Yeah. So it was so important that we heard that story and it provided so many individuals in that space just to understand yeah. what it felt yeah. like to live in Jason. And that's part of that education, Cheers. educating people exactly. and, and providing help for other people too. We're almost out of time, so I want to make sure we talk about um, the Coins for, Coins for, for QI. QI fundraiser. So yeah. tell us about that real quick. So we are asking members in our community to really join us in making sure that our work continues by literally giving your coins, you know? I was so happy that you were literally our first donor. I know, that was so and funny. I'm so I was like, happy yeah. that I'm on your show now. And you know, the ask that I've been asking people is that, can you spare some change? Mm -hmm. And yes, a pun is, in, you know, yeah. is intended. Yeah. yeah. You know, because. Yeah, we'd like a little bit more. But you know what? <laughs> we'll take, exactly. what you, take what you get. You exactly. Know? And, you know, is it $5? Is it $20? Yeah. Is it anything? And the exciting thing that we're doing is when you go to qiportland.org forward slash coins for QI, you can be provided with so many different options on how you can donate. So, for example, I just went online and did it that way. Exactly. But you have another little plan. So, real fun. starting in a couple days, we are partnering with locations and organizations and businesses and simply just even offices mm -hmm. that would like to host a piggy bank. You know, that's the easy. pink piggy bank has been like a mascot for this mm -hmm. campaign. Oh, that's cute. And what we're doing is that we're providing locations that you know they can host a piggy bank and say their staff or their community can pledge to raise like say a hundred dollars yeah. for the campaign and members can go to their location and find it on our map 
or go to a personalized page and donate there. And so you know what, that's good for the businesses too because then they get the word out about who they are exactly. and what they support. Exactly, so, and it's yeah. showing their commitment yeah. Yeah. That's to great. everyone, to social justice, to youth, to youth of color, to LGBT youth, Talk and to our community as a whole. That's a, it's a, that's a, that's a great that's a great fundraiser. I like that. <laughs> yeah. um, we are out of time, Giovanni. So I really appreciate you being on tonight. Thank and you. if people are interested, um, we'll have the uh, website on the screen so people can go and find out how they can donate. Um, you know, if they if they are in a situation themselves where you might be able to help them or know somebody yeah. else who is, you know, get out the word. Perfect. And, uh, and congratulations on doing you know such a great job. And, Thank and you. Know, I'm so happy to have Thank you here you. again. Thank and I love you. your your. I am wearing time my to HRC yeah. shirt. Yeah. You know, I am an HRC Youth Ambassador, and oh, that's the human rights campaign. Yes, yeah, yes. and I'm really proud to be working with them. Good. So yes, I am showing my Good. HRC pride. Thanks so much. Thanks for watching Community Hotline. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've learned something. Um, open your minds and uh, and accept everybody for who they are. And um, if you need some you know support and, and understanding that, check out your website. Thanks very much. I'm Monica Weitzel. Mm -hmm.